Hi guys, my name is David Fine. Today's video is going to be a little different, a little controversial. And what I want to do is before I get into how to euthanize an insect specimen for scientific research, I just want to preface by saying we are into the conservation of these insects. This is not something that uh, we're just going out and doing for fun. This is not just uh, hoarding a huge collection. Uh, what we do at Keys Moths is scientific research, and there's a tremendous value in the collection of Lepidoptera. And I can get into it in other videos, but uh, if it weren't for collecting, especially, particularly moths, uh, we would be missing out on all kinds of new discoveries. Uh, just in the last few years in the Florida Keys, we've identified several new species to science and we would never have been able to do so without putting some traps out and collecting a few specimens. So, uh, but guys, we only take what we need and, and we do so as humanely as possible. So what we want to do in this video is just go over a few ideas as to how to humanely euthanize an insect specimen for scientific research. Now, another thing to think about, a lot of times we humanize uh, insects and things like that and we think about creatures being in pain or suffering. Well, here's good news for you. A butterfly and moth and beetles, other insects, their neurological system is so simple that they don't have the sensation of pain the, the same way we do. We have a very large brain and it translates neurological signals as pain. Well, if you cut a couple nerves, uh, that you know, then we don't have that same sensation of pain that can be dangerous for us humans, especially if we're touching a hot stove or something like that. Uh, but butterflies, moths, insects, they don't even have that neurological hookup. So um, I want to maybe give you a little bit of peace of mind to know that they're not suffering. It's in the concept that we know it as suffering and, and experiencing pain. But there is ways that we use to euthanize the insect specimens that we're using for research as humanely as possible. So here we go. All right, and obviously this moth right here is a dead moth. It's dried, it's dead. I'm, no insects are gonna be harmed in this video, but one of the ways that we would euthanize a large species, this is actually a black witch. It's got a very large body and I'll, I'll show you the how thick the thorax is on this body. Very thick uh, insect. And I've got some kill jars over here, but they're so big that trying to get this thing inside of even the biggest kill jar I have is gonna be difficult without messing up the specimen. So one of the best ways to do this is with a hypodermic needle. And our agent of choice, rubbing alcohol guys, super cheap, super inexpensive. And what you do is you would just take uh, a needle like this and just a couple, like literally one drop. And you would just go into the thorax right here, right here, and inject one drop. And I'm not kidding you when I say this, the moth just goes out super, super fast, super quickly, it, it stops struggling, there's no twitching. There's no nerves, it's gone. So it happens very, very fast. Uh, isopropyl al alcohol is uh, injected. Now, you don't wanna inject too much because if you do, it'll actually eat the lipids and the fats that are inside the body and it will make mounting your specimen very difficult. So uh, you just wanna use as little as possible, one little tiny drop injected into the thorax of the butterfly and it's very, very quick. The most common way to euthanize a butterfly or moth or insect uh, specimen is with a kill jar, all right? And there are several things that people use as killing agents. Some people use cyanide uh, crystals and stuff like that. I can't get a hold of cyanide, so I'm not gonna use that. It's also very dangerous to have in the house. But one of the things that we use and very commonly used is ethyl acetate. It's a type of alcohol. It's it's actually a pretty common chemical, and we buy it from BioQuip products. And what you would do is I would carry, in fact, when I'm carrying kill jars, I have a little caddy with me. And inside of this caddy, I can fit a few jars of my varying sizes. I'll have a little 
plastic bottle of my ethyl acetate. I'll carry a pair of a pair of forceps and I'll carry some um, envelopes like that so I can properly store my specimens without messing them up. And so this will be this will come with me in my bag or whatever. Um, and so what I'll do is charging your jar. Actually, we're going to go over that in another video, but we have different size jars for different size bugs. And if you're collecting insects at a light sheet and there's a lot going on and you're catching them real fast, what we can do is we use a, a dump jar and a large jar made like this or even bigger. And we use the smaller ones to collect our little specimens with. And once they've um, gone, by, by the way, ethyl acetate, uh, if the jar is properly charged with the right amount of the fluid, they go out very quickly. I mean, it's it's a second or two, and they're and they're gone. So, uh, very humane. One of the best ways to do it. And then what we would do is once we're using these, we would dump them into the dump jar, and we would have our, all of them here until we get back to you know our house or hotel or wherever we're going. And then we would use our forceps and put them into envelopes. Finally, guys, one of the better ways to do it is also if you have a cooler or a freezer, uh, you can put like a moth or something like that. A lot of times what I'll do it is I'll put a moth in a plastic cup like this and put it in the refrigerator. And what they do is they're cold blooded. So when it gets cold, they literally just go to sleep and they shut down their metabolism shuts down and a free then you pop them in the freezer once they're asleep and they don't know what hit them. And so it's, that's also a very humane way to do it. Uh, but guys, that's about it. You know, we don't, like I said, we don't kill a whole lot of specimens. We just take what we need for our scientific research, but hope you liked the video. If you like it, give me a thumbs up, comment down below what you want to hear from next as we talk about what it takes to curate a scientific insect collection. So uh, guys, check out our website, keysmoths.com. We've got all of our moths and butterflies from the Florida Keys. Well, these aren't from the Florida Keys, but I uh, hope you liked the video. Uh, let's get out there and enjoy South Florida. And let's